Hey everyone, it's Mojax, back in the DJ City UK lab. Today, with a video which I thought was never gonna get made, because a while back I reviewed the Technics SL1200GR, and I thought that was a really quite lovely turntable, but it wasn't a DJ turntable. And I stand by that to this day. I always give you my honest opinion. I just felt that was a hi-fi deck, and Technics were kind of paying a bit of lip service to DJs around the marketing of it, but I didn't think it was a DJ turntable. So, kudos to them because they've sent me the new Mark 7s to review. I've had these for a couple of months now, I've taken them out, I've gigged with them, done all kinds of testing. So yeah, respect to them for actually stepping up because I don't think they were overly happy with that review, but they've let me loose on these. So this time around, have we got some better results? Let's get into it. So once again, I find myself unexpectedly opening a new Technics 1200. And as I did two years ago, I felt compelled to film myself doing so. I think that's because like so many DJs my age, the first time I did that with my original Mark IIs was a very important moment in my life. And I'm glad new DJs today will have that opportunity if turntables are their thing, which is by no means certain in 2019. In terms of specs and construction, the Mark 7s are not a million miles away from the last model, the SL1200GR, which is pretty impressive considering the price difference. It looks like street price for the Mark 7 will be around $1,000 each, with UK pricing coming in at £800 sterling compared to £1,300 for a GR. That's a significant saving, and whilst the Mark 7 is still one of the more expensive DJ tables out there, the price is certainly not outlandish. They're built using a similar cast aluminium top plate, with the rest of the body being an ABS and glass fibre mix. The matte feel of the surface doesn't feel quite as premium as the GR did, but it should prove to be resilient to wear. Before people start asking in the comments, I should explain that there is no silver version of the Mark 7 available. I've always been a 1210 man, so that's fine with me, but I know some folks love that silver. Whilst there are both 1200 and 1210 variants of the Mark 7, those model numbers only reflect which region the unit is made for, with 1200s being destined for the US and Asia, and the 1210s for Europe. The overall finish is super clean with a nice sturdy solid feel to all the buttons and controls. The only slight disappointment is the target light, that's now an LED so should last effectively forever compared to the traditional lamps of the Mark II era, but it does have a rather cheap feel and sound as you pop it up and down with the spring loaded mechanism. On balance I think I probably prefer this over the rather clunky plug in target lights that are found on other contemporary decks, but it's still not quite as nice as the mechanism on older 1200s. One massive improvement over older models is the connectivity. No, there isn't a built-in preamp or internal grounding, but everything is now fully replaceable, with a standard IEC socket for power, RCA sockets for phono level output, and a ground terminal. This is just a thousand times better than the old fixed cables on classic 1200s, and enables you to try different high-end RCA cables if you have audiophile leanings. The connections are heavily recessed into the body, so work pretty well in battle layout, although due to the angles of exit, you might have to twist the RCA leads a fair bit to get them coming out of the back when you're positioned like that. The coreless motor design is different from the 1200s of old, but it has the same kind of incredibly solid, stable performance with wow and flutter specs which are superior to anything coming out of the handpin factory. The torque situation is interesting. The GR has a starting torque of 2.2 kg per centimeter, with the Mark 7 coming in at 1.8, but the GR also has a heavier platter than the Mark 7, so in use they felt much the same. Indeed, both the torque and the platter weight, 1.8 kg on the Mark 7, are roughly equivalent to those on an older Mark II. So 1200 fans will feel right at home, I certainly did, but anyone used to the much higher torque options available elsewhere today might be a touch underwhelmed. Another area where some DJs might be disappointed is with the pitch range. The default is the standard plus or minus 8% and there's a switch to double that up to 16. I should note that I do really like how the Mark 7 remembers that setting through power cycles, so you don't have to change it every time you turn the table on. Plus there's no center click and a reset button to lock onto zero. So in general, all well and good, but turntablists who use ultra pitch for scratching will find themselves out of luck here as the widest range is that plus or minus 16%. Not generally gonna be a problem for most mixing DJs though. Where the pitch controls excel is in how they feel. I've spent a lot more time with the Mark 7s than I did with the single GR that I only had for a week, and I very quickly learned to appreciate just how good the pitch feel is on these. They're still digital if you're holding out for a company to make analog pitches ever again, you're just dreaming at this point, but whether it's because of some clever algorithm or just how the pitch control interacts with the motor, the pitch feel when you're blending is very, very nice indeed. Accuracy is dead on, and they stay locked in place very tight 
tightly. I'd go so far as to say this is the best digital pitch I've ever used on a turntable. The tone arm is very similar to that found on the GR and in general I like it. It's not a million miles away from a Mark II arm in terms of design and the adjustment is all done in the same familiar way. Tracking is excellent for an S-shaped arm and the sound quality seems to be absolutely on point with real vinyl. My only criticism is that the tone arm assembly does exhibit some movement from the base if you grab hold of it and move it around, very different from older models which were completely solid. Whilst it doesn't appear to lead to any negative consequences out of the box, I do worry that it might become an issue over time as it wears, but that remains to be seen. Moving on to the platter area, that's aluminium and feels very traditional 1200 in its design. It's lined with rubber for resonance control and the massive radius of the magnet section means it sits in place in a very solid fashion. Underneath that platter and accessible through the holes on the surface are the extra operation settings, which are small dip switches that you'll need something like a screwdriver to change. There you can switch the color of the LEDs from red to blue, enable or disable 78 RPM, which is then activated by holding both 33 and 45 together and adjust the startup torque and brake setting. Also hidden in there is the reverse feature. Once enabled, you hold down 33 or 45, hit the start stop button and the motor starts playing backwards. It's not a feature I will ever use much anyway, but without a dedicated button on the surface, I did tend to forget that it existed altogether. Still, it's cool to have it on there. The Mark 7s come with lids and I kind of wish they didn't. Unlike the GR which had traditional hinges, the Mark 7s have the magnetic connectors like on the Mark 5, which means you can easily lift the lid off, much better for DJ use. But like all the old 1200 lids, the Mark 7 ones are made of really hard plastic, which from my experience does not handle much abuse at all. These might well prove to be tougher, but they do feel identical. I doubt there are many old school DJs who haven't cracked or broken a 1200 lid at some point and in an era when deck savers exist, I'd probably prefer it if Technics just made these an optional extra for people who want them and knocked a few bucks off the price of the stock table. So we move on to the most controversial part of my GR review and I fear this review too. I didn't like the feet on the GR, they were really squishy in terms of horizontal movement, too much for my taste when queuing and scratching. The feet on the Mark 7 are much better, although constructed differently from old 1200 feet, they feel much the same, so they've nailed the feet this time. But isolation on the whole is a bit of a problem. When Technics announced the Mark 7 at the NAM show earlier this year, naturally I perused the specs and one thing stood out to me, the weight of them. They weigh in at just over 21 pounds each. Now that might sound like a lot, but the GR weighs just over 25 pounds and the Mark II and Mark V models come in around 27 pounds. As we're dealing with units which are all the same size, we're talking about a fairly significant loss of mass from the body of the table. You can easily feel it when you lift them up. And sadly, that does make a noticeable difference in feedback resistance in loud, bassy environments where DJs usually work. I was hoping Technics had managed to concoct some kind of special source where modern high-tech materials compensated for that loss of mass but they haven't because of that lighter weight the mark 7s resonate at different frequencies from other tables you can hear it clearly in headphones when you queue up a record they cope pretty well with mids and upper bass but as soon as things get deep they just don't handle it too well i was noticing this in my testing at the lab and at gigs and i spoke to another mark 7 user to make sure they were having the same experience which they were but i wanted to be certain so I decided to do probably the most scientific testing session that I've ever done. I took a selection of turntables to the warehouse of Amplify Newcastle, our biggest local hire company, and put them all directly onto a compact 15 inch sub one by one. Same mixer, cart, slip mat and record, and then pushed the gain to the point of howling. And what you're seeing here is my instant reaction to finding that the Mark 7, tested last, performed noticeably worse than the Reloop RP8000 Mark II, the Pioneer PLX1000 and the Technics Mark Mark 5. I was, to be honest, pretty gutted. Because by that point, I'd grown to rather love the Mark 7s. Having spent so much more time with them than that single GR two years ago, I'd come to really appreciate the simplicity of them as a product, the way they aren't cluttered with features I don't use, the clean aesthetic, the way they've pulled off that classic 1200 feel using modern materials. But the fact is they just don't isolate from bass vibration as well as a lot of other turntables. And whilst that won't be too much of a problem for DVS or phase users, if you play a lot of real vinyl sets like I do, do, it could be. So there you go, my take on the SL1200 or 1210 Mark 7 from Technics. Really difficult to conclude this 
because from a purely you know scientific practical point of view if you take turntables with you to gigs at bars or clubs or you're a mobile dj and you play real vinyl there's probably better choices out there for you simply from an isolation perspective these don't isolate as well as the top end super oems the reloops the pioneers or even older 1200s they all isolate better than the mark sevens and that's just a physics thing these are lightweight turntables compared to some of those others and if you have something lighter it's more susceptible to vibration that's just how it is you can't escape it i'm not going to try and sugarcoat it you know these don't isolate as well as those however i don't take turntables anywhere unless i'm reviewing turntables i just use my own at home and i expect venues to provide them for me i'm not carrying turntables around too old for that so you know i'm thinking about okay if i was building a, a home studio setup i wanted a really nice practice rig in my house i've got a nice shiny new mixer which turntables would i buy i'd probably buy these because they've got a lot of that old 1200 magic of old they really do like they're different they're new you know they're not the same completely but they've got some of that magic about them it's just i can't quite put my finger on it but it's the feel of the pitch. The pitch feels fantastic. Best digital pitch that I've used. The motor, spot on. The overall aesthetic, the layout, the feel, they're not cluttered. Yeah, right, it's a pain to get some of those settings under the platter, but if you put them on top and made them easily accessible, is that gonna take away from the feel of a 1200? You know, I'm an old guy. I've been DJing a long time and I came up on 1200s and these just feel comfortable to me and that is, a very important thing you know feel is so important when you're talking about you know especially with an analog medium like vinyl feel is so crucial and Technics have nailed the feel of these absolutely i wish they isolated better because they just nail the feel of a 1200 better than anything else out there on the market today thank you for watching today make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon down below to get notified anytime there's a new video for myself or the rest of the dj city team I'll see you soon.